You know, there's something so quintessentially British about the parish church, isn't there? With the oldest one in our country dating back to the 7th century. They tell the story of 1,300 years of history and social change. Well, today on Songs of Praise, I'll be meeting some people dedicated to preserving these wonderful buildings for future generations to enjoy. They open up the church doors for the communities that they serve. I'm going to be finding out how churches are adapting to life in the 21st century, including one that's home to several businesses, and another that's been given a second chance, all thanks to one man. This is St Martin in the Fields in London's bustling Trafalgar Square, famous for its iconic architecture that's been imitated in designs across the world. For the last three years, St. Martin's has been undergoing a huge redevelopment programme that's cost a staggering £36 million. The renovations haven't just transformed the church. Beneath here, there's an astonishing maze of rooms, including offices, rehearsal rooms, a chapel and a cafe. St. Martin's is used by many different groups. More about that after our first hymn. Let all the world in every corner sing. St. Martin's is known as the Church of the Ever Open Door. During World War I, it provided overnight accommodation for troops using nearby Charing Cross Station. The connection at St. Martin's is based in the former school building and is a centre for homeless and vulnerable people. We see something like five and a half thousand different people a year at the rate of 220, 250 a day. And the task is not just to feed and clothe them, the task is to help them find their voice, get on their feet, gain a sense of self-worth, and to get their life back in control again. I come here primarily for the art. I was homeless, spent about three years on the street. The open door policy is very important to most of us because while they're in here, they've got a bit of warmth, uh, food. If they want to, they've got company. It's got me back into the art, so it means a lot to people. It gives, especially people on the street, it gives them something to think about rather than their problems, like if they're mentally ill, they've got company in here. Um, if they've uh, got problems, they've got someone to discuss it with and hopefully use it. Alcoholics don't tend to drink so much. Who's on the street is so boring, so they get a bottle to drink. It keeps people safe. They don't want anything glamorous. 
They don't want any comforts, just the basics of a, um, a floor to sleep on and uh, um, toilets and things like that, because it's quite dangerous on the streets while they're asleep. I actually come to the connections because um, it keeps me off the street most of the time and uh, I'm actually registered as, a, as an alcoholic and it actually breaks my day up so that I'm not actually drinking all, all the time. It stops the destructive behaviour that I was associated with. It's given me more friends. Uh, I was a bit of a loner before I actually started coming here. Yeah. Well, come to yourself, Come with me, I'll show you. Oh, I do the laundry downstairs and uh, keep myself clean. Yes, I come every day, it's with that. I come every day to get out of the cold, a bit of dinner, a bit of breakfast. It's very cold out on them streets. I became homeless in Birmingham through a repossession and I came down to London to, in the hope of finding accommodation. I came into St Martin's after wandering around for about 11 months and by then I was pretty malnourished. I didn't know about places like St Martin's where you could come in, they had this open door policy Eventually, they found me somewhere to live, too, which was really what I was looking for, you know. So I now live in a really very nice hostel and have regular meals. And um, I'm no, no longer walking around looking for things to eat. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>